Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jesse. This is American Beef Ranch. You're at the ranch. I am uh, working on a few things today. Sorry about the that camera work. Give me a second. I am working on a pivot. We have a pivot. We got to do a little work too. I got to fix some fence. And then I don't know what I'm going to do. I have some other things I need to do. I'm trying to prioritize and figure out what I got to do. But first, I guess let's talk a little bit about some of our irrigation and how it is set up to work. So. Let's head over to this pivot and get to work. So we made it out to the pivot. Um, and I guess we'll talk about it. So this is one of the new pivots we have put up. This is a three tower valley pivot. And you're probably wondering why I'm watering a bunch of weeds. Well, this is new seeding. This is also virgin ground. So this ground has been, may have been watered in the past, but it's probably 50 or 60 years ago. So this ground has not been irrigated by sprinklers ever, really. So what that does is basically there's a lot of weeds that sit here with their seeds in the ground and uh, they, you know, come up when you start watering. So we've got some kosho, we've got some mustard and this is supposed to be a hay field, just so we're getting that through. Uh, funny thing, uh, in this part of the world, uh, we live in Idaho, South Central Idaho. We are in a high desert. So you look out there, that's all desert ground. Uh, the biggest uh, thing you'll see out there usually is sagebrush. And we are currently in 2021, which means we are in a drought. And the drought is here more than anybody. You know, it's here just like everywhere else. The ground out there is really dry. Now, luckily, we still have irrigation water. And without irrigation water we would be sunk. On our property, we have about 500 acres. Uh, without irrigation, we could probably have 25 cows. So with irrigation, with the, amount of, with the amount of irrigation that we have, we can water about 200 acres. So under these new pivots that we got put up, with that, we can have about 200 cows. Um, we're probably not gonna have that many. Between our cows and the leased cows that we've leased out because guys need a pasture and we have some, uh, we probably have 150 here, which is safe, especially since some of these pivots are on new ground and haven't been watered or irrigated or have established pasture because it takes time to establish pasture. Anyway, I'm going to show you. So these right here are oats. What we went ahead and did is because oats is a faster growing crop and it produces, you know, a pretty high yield. We went ahead and put oats, alfalfa, and grass in the 1st of June. Now that's pretty late for alfalfa and grass to be planted, but we went ahead and did that and to help get it established. And then we put the oats because the oats will come up in about 45 days they mature. We can come in, we can swath this entire field. And not only what that does, it gets rid of most of these weeds when we swath them, we'll not come back for the second cutting. Once we swath, we'll put oats back into this field. And the second cutting uh, at the end of September, somewhere in there, we will have oats, alfalfa, grass, mix hay. So basically, what we're doing with this pivot is just being able to feed our cows over the winter. We also put in a funny plant called sorghum, which is this guy right here. Get a better angle of that for you guys. This guy right here, uh, it's a corn-like plant, but uh, we're gonna cut it off before it gets any head or anything like that. And it's kind of more of a grass and hopefully it yields high in tonnage also. So there's a little bit of that in there. But anyway, what I gotta work on is the end of this pivot. Uh, on pivots, you have a sprinkler set that's set for so many gallons per minute, blah, blah, blah. And the farther you come out, the bigger the sprinklers get or the nozzles in the sprinklers get till you get to the end. And in the end, you have a gun, which is like a big yard sprinkler. Basically, it just goes in a half moon back and forth to water because you don't want to go full circle and water back behind it where these sprinklers are already watering. So it's in your overwater and underwater out on the outside. So I'll turn you around. So. This is the exact same gun we had. Basically what happened is this little spring right here busted and it wouldn't hold the stopper deal to let it come back, you know, cause it, to let it, it wouldn't hold it together. So, um, and it was just causing us to make the sprinkler go in a full circle and we wanna, you know, use better, have the best use of the water possible. So we went ahead and these have a two year warranty. We got it a month ago. We're gonna go ahead and switch it out. Also inside of a big, irrigation sprinkler like this like just like your yard except for this is way more expensive it's like 140 dollars you have these little liner deals 
And what these do is they help interrupt the water and cause turbulence so that when it comes out of the nozzle, the nozzle can straighten it and make it shoot farther. So uh, these actually are an important part. So I'm gonna get this put together and I'm gonna crawl up there and get it back on. It is warm today. Hold on just a second. Oh, stay. Yeah, there we go. So I got my tool and my stuff. And come over here and climb up on this pivot. Get her put on. Oh man, it is hot. Okay, now it's adjusted. It goes just a little bit past a half a moon, just like I want it. So it's not gonna over water behind us and it's only gonna water its area right through here. Some of you may be wondering, why do you really care? Why is the end gun as so important to you? I mean, honestly, it can't be as consistent as good irrigation sprinklers, you know, done by the sys companies and all that stuff. And it's not, it's not as consistent. It's not as even. But let's break it down a little bit. On this pivot, the one I was just working on, it's 510 feet long. Okay, by adding an end gun that shoots 50 feet, which is totally reasonable for this pivot, by adding an end gun that shoots 50 feet, I gain two acres on this field. That takes this field from 20 acres irrigated to 22 acres irrigated. Okay, now that's on a pivot that's 510 feet long. You think about my pivot over there, that's 1,250 feet long, and I have an end gun that probably squirts 60 to 75 feet. Think how many acres I'm adding on that pivot. And then you do that, I've got some half pivots over there. They're about 640 foot long. They themselves each are honestly probably right at that 20 acres, maybe a little more, a little less, 20 acres, but they also have end guns. Well, the one has an end gun. It gains two acres on that field. And then above the hill, when I add an end gun, it'll gain two acres. Now, all that's said and done, I'm adding six acres of extra ground on the three little pivots. And then I come over here to this other little pivot, I'm adding eight acres. So in the end, probably, I'm adding anywhere from 16 to 20 acres of irrigated ground with the end guns on my pivots. Is it the same consistency? No. Will it ever be? Probably not, but it is worth it in the end to have the end guns because you just gain acreage. And that's why we still see them row crop guys, they use them. Row crop guys, a lot of the time though, there is a difference. I don't use booster pumps. Uh, it's a big expense, but it is worth it in the end. Uh, we just don't really have the funds. Obviously we spend a lot of money on pivots. I can tell you between sprinkler packages, installing the pivots, getting everything ready to go, $25,000 for these four pivots. It's probably gonna end up being a little more, $25,000. And we already own those pivots. They were sitting on the ground here. That's not buying the pivots too. 25 grand to get them put up and new sprinklers on everything. Everything here has new sprinklers because investing in the new sprinklers literally increased my grass output by 40% because it was watering evenly and correctly where it needed to. Even though I'm not putting out as much water as row crop farmers are, still helped a lot. Now I wanna show you over here one other spot, the end gun versus the pivot itself. So if you look here, my wife drove through the field she yells at me for that. Okay, so this growth right here, all these oats coming up and some sorghum, we got some sorghum in here too. This is all in gun watered. All of this right here is in gun watered. And you can see it's probably not as consistent as if you cross over the pivot track right here and get to the pivot water. And the pivot water looks actually pretty good, pretty consistent. And you can see our oats are coming and we're probably gonna get a good crop. We also have some young alfalfa in here. We've got some grass, sprouts. So. In this area, we're looking pretty good. You know, I do have some spots that didn't grow, but this is virgin ground. But this from here, well, probably from about here out, all this swath out here is gained acreage from the end gun that we wouldn't have. Now it's not super consistent, but it is gained acreage. And as you see, it's not as thick, but it's still producing crop and it's still gonna help me on the bottom line. 
So that's important. We even got sorghum all the way out here on this last row growing from the ingot. And sorghum takes a lot of water to grow. It's like corn, but all of that swath basically on the outside of that pivot track that you, not the wife's tracks right here, the pivot track that we were just in that comes around and you kind of see it up there. All that swath out here is added from the end gun. So definitely end guns would be worth it. I don't really know, this is not the direction I wanted this video to go, but I am gonna say that for us here, irrigation, first off is expensive. It just is, like I said, 25,000 to get the pivots up. We spend $1,500 a month in the electric bill to pump the water and run the pivots because everything's run off electricity. And uh, then, you know, probably 500 bucks a month for miscellaneous breakdowns, including tires, U-joints, gearboxes, stuff like that. Uh, they're pretty reliable. Even used stuff like we have is very reliable for pivots and how much weight they carry and how much work they do. Uh, it's pretty dang reliable. Uh, basically, oh, and we have to pay for our water once a year. We pay, ours is about $3,500 we pay for our water a lot and how much water we get every year. And, you know, that all changes based on where you're at and blah, 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 blah. But anyway, without irrigation, we would die. And so it's a necessary evil here. Like, there's no way to, <laughs> there's no way to make a profit here. Well, there is, but it takes a different kind of money input. And it's still money going out. So you can have fewer acres and irrigation, or you can have a crap load of acres. And that makes up that cost difference. And personally where we're at we're privately owned and we're not on public land that's what a lot of cattlemen are around here they are have allotments for grazing on public ground and that's great but they have a whole bunch of acres and on years like this year where there's drought they're calling people like me who have irrigated pasture and saying hey can i bring 20 head to help me out i'm short on grass and you know most of the time i say yes because i feel bad but anyway i am more secure ish as long as we get some snow and stuff the other cool thing about the place that i live in south central idaho is not only do we use the water to irrigate okay this is all basically snow mountain water and we use that to irrigate that's really cool but also all this water also powers these pivots so the water is getting used twofold yeah it gets sprayed on crops to go crops but it also goes through hydroelectric power plants and uh creates the energy to run all this stuff here. And I know some people get up in arms about hydroelectric energy, how it's not safe and good for the environment. Trust me, they figured out, hydroelectric's been around for a while and they've pretty much got around all the problems that hydroelectric produces. Not saying it's perfect because really there's no perfect solution for any of this, but it's a very good option in the market. And honestly, like the power of water is obviously unmatched. We can see it here growing green grass and we can, power these pumps and pivots off of it. So we have all that really cool stuff happening with water. Water's amazing and I love water, but man, sometimes it can be frustrating. Anyway, uh, I'll get off my soapbox now. Nobody's probably watching this video anymore because I just ranted and did stuff, but I gotta fix some fins. Uh, animals keep getting in my hay field and I'm not happy about it. This is their winter feed, not their summer feed. So, oh, I wish they would figure that out. But yeah, gonna fix some fence. Oh, and I'm sorry that I'm sweating gross. It's 95 degrees here, the first of July, July 5th or 6th, 6th, I think. July 6th, and it's hot. Usually in Idaho, 95, 100 degrees is not unheard for, but not, it's not uncommon at all, but it doesn't happen till the end of July. Like the last two weeks of July, it'll get hot. Oh, like the last three weeks, it's been 90 plus in June. And it's just got really hot really fast and that's only escalated the drought conditions. But we're doing good. Luckily, we're doing good. Inflation of all the other stuff like fuel and hay and all that stuff is gonna affect us. But luckily we are doing good. So let's fix some fence. Okay, well, fence is fixed. Had a broken wire, so it was easy, especially four wire fence. Uh, my opinion on fence, if it's not five wires, it's not good enough. Uh, we build barbed wire fence here because it's permanent. Uh, you know, it's just what we use in this part of the country. Uh, the difference between a good fence and a great fence, I think, is the closer together the posts, the better. Five wires at least. And also, this top wire is way too tall. 
for most cows. I mean, right here in this high spot, it's good, you know, but if you get over here, it's a little tall, but uh, overall, the post, how far are these posts? Yeah, so the posts are about 20 feet apart. I like to see 15 or less on posts. I didn't build this fence. My cut, one of my grand, my grandpa when he owned the place had my cousins build this fence. It's not up to spec. It has to have another wire, especially for if you're running small frame cattle for grass finished stuff. They'll go under fence, over fence, through fence. Posts need to be closer together. Need to have stays, and uh, you, you got to think like you're building a wall, not like you're building a fence. So. Uh, not gonna get enough definitely gonna have to be upgraded but we're gonna change the pasture strong because hopefully we're adding another pivot in here and uh, yeah so but uh on to the next project come on zam oh the next project i don't know if you can see her there's a red cow right there a red heifer red heifer we're gonna go get her in let's see if i can use zam zam to get her in Got her put up, little yearling heifer. Gonna get this gate shut and then head on to the next project. Try not to die of heat exhaustion or something today. Whew. Next project because we are trying to hide from the uh, sun a little because it's hot. Uh, finish the floor in our bedroom. So this would be the master with big walk-in closet. This used to be a little bedroom, but the wife's like, wall it off, knock a hole in it. It's going to be my closet. She said, uh, since our daughter's going to be born in like two and a half months, I really probably should finish our bedroom so we can move out of the baby room. And, uh, so that requires me putting the floor in. <laughs> so I got it in, in the room, but the closet itself got a little work to do. Tell us what you think about this rose gold pink color. At first I wasn't really a fan, but it's kind of grown on me. It's really not a bad color. We've got some touch up work to do. And my drywall workers don't the best over here, but it's a closet, so it's something we would do. But we're gonna get this floor knocked out. Few days later I uh gonna go ahead and show you this in gun and the new one and how much better it's working and stuff like that because I got the pivot going but I gotta make a few adjustments to it so it's working pretty good as you see but the the stream is kind of spread out and from what I can tell the reason is is not because it's plugged or anything which is common but there's a little uh screw on the end there's a little screw on the end Ah, there's a little screw on the end that uh, is going into the stream. I gotta screw that out. And then you can also see it's not doing a half moon. It's going too far. So I gotta adjust that. So I'll be back after I get that adjusted. All right, as you can see, I've got a much longer stream here. It's shooting out quite a bit farther, probably three times as far now. And it should click back and go only in the half moon. There we go. Not as consistent, you know, as the pivot itself, but still, look at all that distance it's gonna add to the crop. And like I said, it's inconsistent. Where the wind blows, it'll push it farther or shorter, you know, depending. But still, it's gonna add ground and it's gonna be worth it in the end. So now, 
I am headed to pour a concrete pad or prep for a concrete pad ish kind of so uh, I'm putting in a water tank a nice uh, automatic water tank out in the middle of the big pivot not in the middle but inside the middle ring of the big pivot on the pasture that way the cows have fresh water and if I turn like you know right now it's freaking 95 degrees plus every day if I turn the pivot off they don't have any water out there so to have a water tank out there so that they can still get water because they're, they're stuck in the middle ring they can't get out of it so to have a water tank out there where they can drink and then I can move my water around and water my other parts is important but I'm going to take you on top of the hill first because I want to show you how our uh, new pivot is doing growing oats so I've only watered it Let's see, what have I watered it? Three times, I've only watered it three times. And we've got some oats coming out of the ground, but another reason I wanna get this water tank done, I wanna get it done so that I can water the, turn the big pivot off and water the oats and this other grass again that I'm gonna move the our cows onto, you know, so that I can start growing some more crop for them because our cows are out here on the desert and uh, they're starting to get hungry. It's about time to move them out. So yeah, let's get to it. You see these little guys? They're called oats. And they're all over up here on top of this little hill that we planted. We planted oats because, one, because they grow really fast. They're good for forage. They're good to feed your cows, you know, and stuff like that. But they grow fast and they green up fast. It gives you something there so that stuff coming behind it has a chance to grow. If we were to put grass in here, we wouldn't be able to put the cows on it for upwards of a month but with these oats in a couple weeks we'll be able to bring the cows in here and let them graze it off and then take them back off and let other stuff come up behind it so it just gives us an opportunity to give us more forage and they're pretty inexpensive too so if you need if you're in a spot and you need some feed for your cows and you don't have a whole lot of time oats are a great option so uh yeah all over up here super exciting let's get to work on this concrete pad Okay, here we are out at the water line. You see the water line coming out of the ground. You can see that's where the other water tank is. It comes under the ground to right here. And then we got a freeze tube. I filled it with some water. And I'm gonna set my form right here, four foot wide or three foot, 10 inches wide or eight inches wide by 15 long. And then uh, we'll square it up and get it where I need it to go. And uh, get the post set. We'll put some of this bar in here to hold everything in place. And uh, then, yeah, we'll show you guys that. Form is set and it is wetted down. The wind's gonna scream. The, the reason you wanna wet down the form is because the concrete will pull moisture out of the ground. Or if it's not there, the moisture from the concrete will go into the ground. So it's just a good thing to have a wet area, a soaked area. So I got it good and wet. I'm gonna go grab the trailer with the concrete and uh, start pouring concrete bags in here and mixing it up. A lot of fun. Takes about a cap pallet of concrete, so 42 bags of concrete. I only have like 40, but still. Lots of fun. 40 times 80, you did that math. That's how much uh, concrete I gotta move. 3,200 pounds. Max of 80 pounds. I'm gonna be worn out. So uh, let's go get the concrete though. There we have it. Poured concrete pad. Now, is it perfectly level? No. Is it gonna be nice, pretty on top concrete? No. Is it gonna be solid enough for me to bolt the water tank to? Yes. That's all I'm looking for. This is hand poured out of bags with water mixing and you're just doing your best. But this water will, or this concrete will draw water in from the, I sprayed on it. It'll draw water from the ground and the pivot is gonna come around and should go over to the top of this tonight so it'll get another dousing of water. So. But tomorrow when I come to bolt the concrete or bolt the water tank on, it'll be nice and solid. Guys, I'm Jesse. This is American Beef Ranch. Thanks for coming along with me the last couple of days. Check back in tomorrow. We'll get this water tank in and uh, some H braces and some other stuff because we got to build some fence because I got to move my cows, not the least cows, my cows to some new pasture and because uh, they're hungry. So anyway. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, check out the links in the description and support your local producers if you can because right now is a really tough time to be a farmer and rancher and uh, if you can help them in any way, it'd, it'd be a good idea. Thanks guys. See you later.